Hi, and welcome to this video on Real Life Applications, Part 1, brought to you by the Answer Series. We are going to tackle three examples in this video, all of which are very different. In the first example, we have a shrub given with a height of 110 centimetres before we plant it. By the end of the first year, the shrub has a height of 120 centimetres. Thereafter, the growth of the shrub each year is half of its growth in the previous year. And what we are being asked to do is to show that the height of the shrub will never exceed 130 centimetres. Pause the video and try this on your own. Then I will give you a brief hint and another chance to try. The essence of this question lies in understanding that the 110 centimetres forms part of the solution, but not part of the calculation. What we need to do is realise that in the first year, this shrub is only growing 10 centimetres. So the growth in the first year is 10 centimetres. After that, it halves. So in the second year, it is 5 centimetres. In the third year, it is 2,5 centimetres. And this continues indefinitely. So we are working with a sum to infinity formula. And we still need to think about what we're doing. Pause the video. Try one more time on your own. Having established that we understand the growth pattern, we simply use the sum to infinity formula, S infinity equals A over 1 minus R. We substitute the values that we are now sure of. The A value is 10 and the R value is a half. Substitute those into the formula and the maximum growth will be 20 centimetres. Having started with a shrub at a height of 110 centimetres with a maximum growth of 20 centimetres, the maximum height the shrub will reach is 130 centimetres. In the second question, we have a man injured in an accident who receives an income from his disability grant of 48,000 Rand in the first year. The grant increases by a fixed amount each year. It is very important. We are going to answer two questions based on that information and we'll take them one at a time. In the first question, you are told to consider a 20-year period which produces an accumulated amount of 1,435,000 Rand in total from the grant. And with that information, you are asked what the annual increase will be of his amount that he receives, starting with 48,000 Rand. Pause the video and see if you can answer the question and then it will help you with it. The most important information is the fact that we are working with a fixed increase. So we are going to use the formula for a sum calculation for an arithmetic series. We know that the A value is 48,000. We know that the N value is 20. And we know that SN result is 1,435,000 Rand. Simply substituting those values into our formula produces the outcome of D equal to 2,500. So his annual increase per year is 2,500 Rand. Pause the video and process this in your own time if you need another look. In question 2.2, his initial annual expenditure is 26,000 Rand and this increases at a rate of 4,000 Rand per year. The question we have to answer is in which year would his expenses exceed his income? This is quite challenging, but bear in mind that you know his initial income to be 48,000 Rand, and from question 2.1, we know the fixed annual increase is 2,500 Rand. Pause the video and try the question, and then we'll go through it together. What we're going to do is set up a formula for the general term of an arithmetic series. 26,000 is his first year of expenses. That increases by 4,000 Rand per year, and so we multiply that increase by n minus 1. For his income, he starts his general term with 48,000 Rand. This increases by 2,500 each year, so we multiply that by n minus 1. Now we compare those results. So on the right side, we have the formula for his income, and on the left side, we have the formula for his expenses. 
And separating those, we have an inequality statement because we are trying to work out when his expenses will exceed his income. The inequality only becomes an issue if you multiply or divide by a negative. So work carefully, but don't be afraid of an inequality. Simplifying the two sides and working out the value of n produces an outcome whereby n has to be greater than 15,67. This means that he has enough money to cover his expenses for 15 years, but after that he runs into trouble. So his expenses will exceed his income for the first time during the 16th year. To explain that differently, after 15 years, his income is 83,000 and his expenses 82,000. So we can see that his income is greater than his expenses. However, after 16 years, his income is 85,500, whereas expenses are now 86,000. So by the end of the 16th year, he's spending more than what he's taking in. So his expenses will exceed his income in the 16th year. Example three is very different. We are now looking at a rubber ball. The rubber ball is being dropped from a height of 15 meters. So if you look at the very rough sketch here, the ball is coming down. It loses 20% of its height at each rebound. So you'll notice that when it rebounds, it's not going as high as it was before. And this pattern of losing height continues with each consecutive bounce. So the ball goes a little less high on each bounce. You have three questions to answer. I want you to pause the video, try all three questions, one after the other, and then we will go through them one at a time. In question 3.1, we need to determine the height the ball will rise to after the second bounce. So we are systematically going to work out the height of the ball after the first bounce, and then after the second bounce. Don't use 20%, because 20% is what is lost. Take the 20%. Work out what is retained and work out the height of the second bounce. Essentially, you need to focus on the fact that 80% is retained. So you take 0, 0,8 of the height the ball started at and your first bounce height will be 12 meters. Then you take 80% of 12 meters and your second bounce will have a height of 9,6 meters. In question 3.2, we want to know the number of times that the ball will rise to a height of over 3 meters. You have to think quite hard about this. Pause the video and try it again if you got stuck earlier, and then I'll explain it to you. Essentially, we already know the height of the first two bounces, and we could continue multiplying through by 0, 0,8 to generate more terms. But we have more than enough information to know that we are working with a geometric sequence. So we substitute into our TN formula the value of the first bounce and the ratio and the index of n minus 1, and then we make that result equal to 3 to see what we're going to get. The easiest way to answer this is to make use of logs. So our base is 0, 0,8, our number that we are taking the log of is 0, 0,25, and the calculator will generate the exponent for us. So this value here is the index that we need. Now remember that value is the value of n minus 1. So we are going to add 1 to both sides and come up with n equal to 7,212. The dots indicate that I haven't rounded off yet. That is not the answer we now need to decide whether the answer is seven bounces or eight bounces. If we go back to where we started, the bounce height was 12, then 9,6, then 7,68. It is definitely dropping in value. So on seven bounces, it will have a height which is greater than three meters. If you continue to eight bounces, on the eighth bounce, it is approximately 2,5 meters, which is less. So the correct answer here is that the ball will rise to a height of three meters seven times. The last question is different, but does use what you've understood so far in 3.1 and 3.2. You now have to work out 
the total vertical distance that the ball will travel from the moment it was dropped until the time it comes to rest. If you got stuck, pause the video and try it one last time. I am going to give you a quick hint. The ball drops from a height of 15 meters and travels in one direction only. Then it rises 80% of that distance and drops again. Then it rises 80% of that distance and drops again. And this pattern continues indefinitely. Try again one more time. You have two options that I can think of. You might have another option and that's fine as long as you know what you're doing. So I've chosen to take the up and down movement as a single distance. So each time I am doubling the height of the bounce to get the final result on that distance traveled. So you will notice that my A value is 24, not 12, and my R value doesn't change. Using those values and the sum to infinity formula, you simply substitute, add your 15, because that value is a standalone value, which needs to be included, but the ball has traveled 15 meters, but that value is not doubled. Adding those results together produces an outcome of 135 meters. The second option is that you don't double the way we did with the first option. You leave the A value as 12. You will still have an R value of 0, 0,8. And into your sum to infinity, you simply substitute 12 and 0, 0,8. Then you double the result because you know that each time the ball goes up, it has to come down the same amount. Doubling that result and then adding 15 will give you 135 meters as well. We've just tackled three very different questions. Take the time to go back to any questions that you struggled with, knowing that if questions of a similar type cross your path in the future, you'll have a much better chance of answering them without any problems. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.